Hello and welcome to another video from Ethereal Gaming. So today we're going to take a look at the Rheinmetall Scorpion. This is a tier 8 German tank destroyer. But before we start I just want to say thank you to all the support that we have gained through Twitch, YouTube and on Facebook Gaming. And just a reminder to people as well um, to follow us live on Twitch, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos and to follow us on Facebook and our Facebook page as well where you can also see some of the live streams so thank you for your support and if you want to see more from this channel more for content from this channel then please like and subscribe and follow on the various different platforms so we're going to take a look at the Rheinmetall Scorpion and we're going to have a look at one of the games I played in it a couple of days ago. This is probably my favourite tier 8 premium credit maker. Um, it is incredibly popular in the game. And one of the reasons I like it for its credit making is that when you're really grinding out credits and, you know, bearing in mind that we have the limited time to play and we're often short on credits, um, you can be spending quite a lot of time grinding this tank over and over and it's it's quite a relaxed type of gameplay yes a lot of people would call that boring um, but sometimes you just need a bit of that when you are grinding the same tank repeatedly uh, to gain credits and the scorpion does that incredibly well it's quite a slow and passive type of gameplay and the main reason for that is it has no armor at all it's going to get penetrated by most things um, a smart enemy will be switching to high explosive shells particularly if he's got intuition and will be hitting you for a lot of damage so um, this very much is a tank that you play on the edge of the battle sneaky um, and from long range but it does have an excellent gun it's got 246 millimeters of penetration at standard rounds 490 alpha damage which is great for the credit earning now i have a an okay skilled crew full brothers in arms six cents some camouflage skills full repair skills um, and we're now in the process of uh, getting some of those view range skills up and that kind of leads me on to the equipment i'm currently using i'm using a rammer in the firepower slot I've got full field mods on the vehicles. I've got a secondary slot there, which is the scouting slot. Now, currently, that has a camo net and binoculars. Now, um, the binoculars are quite important um, because of the lack of the view range skills on the crew. So we're trying to boost that view range as much as possible. And currently, you can see that has 467 meters of view range. Now, once what that does mean is it makes the vehicle quite static because, of course, you need to be stopped for the binoculars to work. Um, so, therefore, I opted for a camo net, which complements that more static type of gameplay. The advantage being that as a turreted tank destroyer, you have plenty of uh, opportunity to um, face any direction without breaking uh, the binoculars and the camo net. However, I am looking to get a secondary set of equipment, which would be the Rammer, a low noise exhaust system and coated optics once we have those view range skills up and that will give us a much more mobile build when we end up in towns and cities and so on. So uh, overall, um, great tank. It's mobile. It's got a good gun, um, but it's gun dispersion. Uh, can sometimes be a problem and that does um, bring into question if you would go with the coated optics you could often swap that out for an aiming device gun dispersion you know 0.27 at 100 meters that's not too bad um, but I have found many times um, thinking about whether this gun is actually going to aim the shells where I put them uh, however, I wanted to put this video together because just to show that sometimes lady luck is with you and you can turn around to the game and go, gun dispersion? What is that? Is that even in the game? So um, let's take a look at that game now and see what happened. So here we are in our Scorpion on the Redshire map and you can see we have a few tier nines. We've got a couple of artillery pieces in there, which is bad news for a Scorpion. Uh, some tier eights and also some tier sevens. So 
not bad matchmaking at all for this tank. So we're moving, we're in the southern uh, spawn point, so we're moving straight away to uh, one of the good spawn points uh, or good, good starting points for tank destroyers does depend upon uh, the rest of your team. But um, this is a great point to get a crossfire onto the heavies moving into their position. And we're getting the trees down uh, to increase our camouflage. And also, you need to put more than one tree down because it helps um, to at least uh, open the area where we could be sitting. Because it's well known that we would be in this location. So I've moved forward just a little bit so that I can actually see through the trees, which is quite important in this area. Um, the, there are a lot of trees here, so often you will be kind of blind firing through the trees. Um, you can't see necessarily if the whole tank you're shooting at is behind cover or not. So I've moved forward and uh, to try and get some vision. And unfortunately, we don't have any light tanks um, that are spotting for us here. So that IS-3 manages to get into position. But there's a 257. And okay, here we go. This seems to be a typical Scorpion game from me. Uh, we are firing centre of mass at the target and we don't hit it and then we fire a second shot far too late and the target's now gone behind hard cover and we can only see the top of his turret but luckily for us 257's move backwards and we fire a shot we get our first shot on so so far a standard game we did 515 damage after three shots and um, nothing special about that so we're just surveying the battlefield to see what else is out there. There's not been any other spots right now, so it's uh, it's quite an interesting game. Still a lot to develop, still not sure where people are going to be. And we're always vulnerable here for medium tanks, aggressive, that come over the hill uh, to spot the tank destroyers in this location. The VZ there, he's safe behind cover. The Scorpion as well, he's in some dead ground, so we can't see him either. So, so far, a relatively slow start and tame game with only one shot. However, the heavies are find themselves in a big brawl and we've already lost our VZ-44. Uh, now, we see a comet. We snap to the location. We're not fully aimed as the comet starts to move and we get a hit. So that was a, a, a lucky shot. Next, we're looking at a T26, and unfortunately, he's not quite visible, but there's an ISU, and we snap to him, and we instantly shoot and get another hit. So already, we can start to see um, the shots are going exactly where we aim, and we fire that second shot, and we hit the ISU again. So we're now up to 1,500 damage, and the shots are hitting their target every single time. And these are not short range shots, these are very long range shots and uh, and and we seem to be having lady luck, the, the, the shells are going and there's that T26, he's moved backwards, we waited for him to move, we got the hit, he finally gets ammo racked and we're up to 2000 damage and we've hit every single shot since the first penetrating shot we made after the two misses and that is a pretty good uh, start to the game. But we are now nearly four minutes in. We've been sat in this location and it is time to move. We have an advantage over the enemy team and now it's time to make the most of that. So we're moving cautiously. We're moving cautiously through the trees. We're stopping. And this is what I talked about, the ability, the needing to stop to get those binoculars up. But there's nothing that we have a good uh, spot on at the moment. Oh, but there's a 112. And we shoot, and again, the shell goes exactly where we aim, and we get a nice hit on that 112 for 496 damage. Unfortunately, we now can't see the 112. He's gone behind either a wreck or some hard cover, and we can't see him or the scorpion, even though we're zooming in. As you can see, one of the issues is we're behind the trees, so we're kind of moving the reticle around to see if we can spot uh, the tank in the same for the Hellcat and the VZ-51 who are actually behind the hill, but we can't see that from this location. So again, we're gonna move forward. We're gonna try and use the rocks as cover as we, as we spot. And as we come around here again, moving from hard cover to hard cover, because if you are spotted, often scorpions are prioritized because everybody knows they have low armor. So even though there may be other enemies 
closer to them, they will still go for the scorpion because he's dangerous and he's easy to kill. So again, lots of pressure on the enemy team. This is a complete whitewash, um, but we have been fortunate in hitting every single one of our shots um, after those first two misses. So now we're looking for the comet. We're expecting that comet to retreat, become visible over the top of the hill. Um, the artillery goes in there and we don't see him. So I think he might be tracked at this point. So we switch and there's an artillery and again. We're not even fully aimed. We switch round, we fire, and we hit that artillery in the face for 450 damage. And we know there's a T95 left. And again, we're not fully aimed. We, we turn, we shoot, and we get a shot straight in on the T95. We're waiting for the reload. And it looks like we might get a chance to get a final shot in. But we can only see the top of his tank. And again, the shell goes exactly where we aim it. Another 490 uh, damage roll lady luck was with us a total of 3900 damage and we managed to hit every shot after those first two misses and we penetrated every single shot uh, and we got some good damage rolls with it so gun dispersion i'm not sure there is any on the scorpion is there well certainly not in this game let's go back to the garage Okay, so we're now back in the garage and I just want to reiterate today, that was not a normal game for me. Often I will be there shooting at long range at targets and watching my shells uh, make banana arcs as they whiz off up, down, left, right and anywhere, but I'm aiming them on the target. Um, but I thought that was an interesting match to show you that sometimes it will all go right for you at the end of the day. The dispersion, as I said, is 0.27. I definitely think there's a case for an aiming device on this tank, especially if you're going to be uh, you know, using it at longer ranges. Though I do think that that would be uh, much more useful once you've got that crew skilled up. If you're going to be using binoculars to get your view range up, it already makes you static. Um, would I change a ram up for the aiming device? Um, that's something that is definitely uh, an option uh, though anything that I can do to, to increase the rate of fire particularly if you end up in those more close quarter battles um, in towns where you you need to pop out shoot and then somebody's going to charge you because they know they've got no armor sometimes you can have reloaded quick enough to get that second shot in I think this tank is one of the tanks that I would definitely be looking to take a second equipment setup maybe with an aiming device low noise exhaust system as I said, and then either maybe a rammer or coated optics for those more um, close quarter maps than the one we had on Red Shear. So there we go. Gun dispersion, not in that game, um, but I'm sure uh, many of you will find that it happens in, uh, in lots of other games. The shells uh, don't always go where you aim them or certainly where you want them to go. But overall, the Scorpion, a great credit maker, a great tank, thoroughly recommended. Um, probably eclipsed maybe only in its role by the SE-130PM, though they're pretty close, I have to say. And thank you very much again for your support. You've been watching Ethereal Gaming and we'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs>